As expected, we see once again slight to moderate growth being talked of, but it seems as though the worker shortage is still very much front of mind for these anecdotal evidence. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, the talk about slight growth, you had, you had that. You had a lot of districts affected by the government shutdown. Uh, you had retailing fairly weak. All this is kind of consistent with weakening growth. Last year, you had uh, the first 3% uh, growth uh, year in, in a long time. Uh, and now we're moving back to a new level. I mean, if you look at the Atlanta Fed's uh, GDP now, uh, tracking estimate, it's under 1% for the first quarter. Uh, you had John Williams, head of the New York Fed today, talking about uh, maybe we're moving back to a new normal, I mean, of a, of a slow 2% growth. Uh, on the labor market, it is interesting. Uh, uh, you know, it is tighter than ever. Companies are still talking about having trouble uh, landing workers. Uh, they're going to some extremes to keep workers, uh, offering lots of incentives. And, and some of that detail is really interesting. It is really interesting, and I guess my question to you is, if we're hearing this anecdotal evidence of a labor shortage, presumably they're having to pay up more as well for the workers that they do want to keep on staff and to entice more potential workers. When does that start showing up uh, in a more meaningful way in the jobs report? We get the jobs report on Friday, and average hourly earnings expected to increase, what, 3.3% year over year. 3.3%, yes. Right, but it's still below the, the peaks that we saw, say, back in 2008 of 3.6%. Uh, when do we actually break out? Yeah, we are seeing some pickup. Uh, and in fact, if we get the 3.3% number, that will be the highest number we have had in a decade. Uh, it's not where we were, but it, it's definitely moving in that direction. Uh, so there are some signs of, of a pickup. And in fact, if you look at uh, the, some of the data for people who have switched jobs as opposed to people who are staying in the same job, uh, they're getting pay raises of four to five percent. So there, there are some signs that this is this is starting to uh, affect wages. Uh, there are some estimates on Friday that uh, you could have as, as much as a 3.4 or 3.5 percent average hourly uh, earnings increase, mm. and and that would get the market's attention for sure. And Steve, I mean, this sort of comes, we've got a Fed downgrading basically the view of U.S. growth. On the same day as the OECD downgrades its outlook for global growth, on the same day as we get a Bloomberg scoop showing that the ECB is likely to downgrade its, downgrade its growth outlook tomorrow at its meeting, this is not, all not boding particularly well. No, no. And in fact, you know, you, there's a theme in all of those stories. Yes, growth is slowing. I mean, uh, there's no doubt that uh, European growth w uh, was was slow before now. The e ECB, we are reporting, uh, is downgrading their estimates for growth and inflation. Uh, you know, that's, this has gotten the attention of uh, central banks around the world. The Fed has said as of January it will be patient in making any adjustments, and adjustments meaning that rates could go up, they could go down. Uh, and I think you're seeing the same thing or, or will see the same thing from the ECB and other major central banks where uh, they will be moving to a very cautious, more accommodative approach.